Good morning, everybody. Welcome to, to November's Spotlight webinar, The Wonderful World of Website Nurture. We're just about ready to kick off. Hopefully you can see, uh, see a full screen version of the slides. If you can just let me know that you can see my screen properly, you can hear me okay. Hey, can someone just put in the chat? Did you uh, make sure we're all good to go before we dive in? That'd be great. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you very much. I want you to get started in that case. So we are talking today about the wonderful world of what a treat of your day. You've got 60% of Spotler's entire marketing team taking you through this because it's a big topic. It's an important part of everything we do. Uh, my name's Richard. I'm a senior marketing exec here. I'll get involved in writing a lot of the campaigns. We've also got Jess, who is our marketing manager, and Susan who is our head of events and demand generation. Uh, for too long, I'm going to kick it off. Uh, we've tried to schedule it, we've tried to plan it around a typical website journey. So I'm going to start hopefully where your, most of your website visitors would start with, with your landing pages and then deal in a bit forms that you put the pages. And then uh, Susanna is our pop-up queen, so she's going to talk to you about those signs, the way that you can get people who who come to you organically rather than um, rather than through paid ads or clicks, where you can direct them to landing. You'll get them to where you want to go. And then Jess will finish up talking about the campaigns that we run back of those results, having gathered that detail with with landing pages and forms and pop-ups. What do we what do we do? How do we take these these sort of curious first time visitors and nurture them to the point that they that they want to speak to our sales team and, and eventually give us some money. Um, and then we will open it up to, to a Q&A after that. You've already seen, hopefully there, there is a questions tab on the, on the GoToWebinar uh, module. So if you think of a question at, at any point during, during the presentation, feel free to type it in there. But what we'll do, we will go through and answer them in bulk at the end of the presentation. Um, I'll read them out so everyone can hear them properly and uh, came up in um, them and handle them from there. If you if we come up with a question that is that needs a, a really detailed answer or is, or is really specific to, to what you're doing rather than sort of more generally applicable, we'll follow up with you um, more directly. Uh, we've got all your email addresses from from when you signed up so so if we can't answer the answer the question in, in a few sentences we'll take the time to to write something up and get back to you then as with as with everything we do all our all our webinar series we'll uh, we'll make sure you get these resources afterwards we these you guys that are listening to it live now will get uh, a pdf of the slide deck and a video download of the entire thing that that we go over too quick or you want to to revisit or or share with the rest of your team. Keep an eye on your inbox. We'll aim to get these out to you uh, in 24 hours. So um, Thursday lunchtime is when you need to look. Do have a look in your junk folder, especially if you're joining us for the first time, because there's a video download. It's quite content heavy. Some spam filters go, oh, don't like the look of that and, and ship it to junk. But if it's not in your inbox or in your junk folder by, by about one o'clock tomorrow afternoon, drop us a line at uh, marketing team at spotler.co.uk um, and we'll make absolutely sure you get those follow-up resources so you can start putting it all into practice. And I think that's all, all the admin out of the way so I'm going to dive straight into my section on uh, landing pages and how and the role they play in your website nurture. Um, I've kind of seen the background, the why this matters, uh, smart insights who we we researched and found that 61% of online marketers uh, have found that generating traffic and leads is their biggest challenge. I'm going to break that down a little bit more and say it's easy to generate traffic. It's hard to generate leads. It's hard to generate necessarily the right. It's very easy to get attention from, from like we said, organic search, from social, from email, from word of mouth, from all these different areas. Very easy to get people coming to your website. What's harder is to separate the good stuff out than the ones that are actually going to convert into leads and and to do the work of actually converting them. 
and uh, landing pages convert twice as much as a really info heavy as an info heavy uh, product page or details page and and you'll see as i go through that they are they're optimized for getting that conversion which is part of the reason for that especially important if you're running paid advertising ppc or or sponsored updates on social um by you can see there they generate a much higher more personalized um and a personalized click experience generates much more uplift and it literally gives you um better roi because that these are those are clicks and leads you've paid for so it's even more important to convert those um just compared to organic traffic that you're getting uh, essentially for free um want to be clear on on the definitions of what a landing page is uh, in essence it's uh, a page that's styled to look like the rest of your website but it's as we said very focused on a conversion which to us means capturing possibly a name but definitely an email address an email address is the key one out of those two um as well as the styling which i'm going to talk to you about they offer um it's a it's a deal eventually you offer a resource a free trial some kind of benefit because i think people understand email address to a website especially in, in b2b terms you are inviting attention from marketers like ourselves and so you have to make it uh, make it worth their while by offering them something of value to them in exchange for them giving the email address which has value to you points about a landing page as we said they're very personalized they're campaign specific and every every campaign every ad that you run should have its own landing page if you're following strict best practice and more importantly, that you can't click onto a landing page from somewhere else on the website, even if they're styled that way. They're very much a one route in, one route out type resource. Again, as we said, it's focused on getting that conversion. The cardinal sin that we still see people of all stripes carry out is sponsored LinkedIn advert, uh, sponsored LinkedIn update. And then it redirects to the home page and this isn't a landing page for a very clear reason but there's just too many ways too many routes that people can travel too many places they can go just take a second this is the first half of spotless home page just take a second see how many um how many different routes someone could could go off and wander off in or click through when they land here four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve different routes Um, we all heard eight second attention span. Now, um, that's not quite true. What it is, is you only have eight seconds to make an impression. People decide in those eight seconds whether they're whether the site they've come to um, and deliver what they want. And no one's achieving anything valuable in eight seconds from a home page. There's no direction. 31% of marketers are measurably losing traffic from doing this. So, even if your landing pages are the most basic and you don't follow all the best practice stuff we're going to tell you about, if you just direct people to a landing page rather than your home page, you're getting the jump on 31% of your competition, which is not, you know, not insignificant. This is what a landing page looks like. And it's got five key features which uh, mark it out from a standard web page. And I'm going to talk you through them in detail, starting from the top. Uh, what I've also done is pull examples of landing pages which aren't so good just to give you a bit more of a comparison um, and see where they're going wrong. Like we said, the focus of this uh, of a landing page is to is to get that conversion. You want you don't want them to leave the page without giving you their email address. And so to that end, we've stripped out all of the all the top menus, all the headers, everything else um that goes in there so there is no distraction there um compare this one from zendesk it's not a bad one generally speaking it's quite cleanly laid out and clear but by leaving that banner header you're significantly reducing the chances that they sign up for that demo or that free trial that zendesk is pushing them for so it'll be a simple improvement to make it would massively improve their conversion rate Then you move on to the header, the first thing that you read, and this is about showing 
make capturing that eight second impression you can see here. This was um, this was sat behind a PPC campaign that we ran about uh, sorry that we ran about email deliverability. So we get email deliverability there in the first line. The important thing with your header is to match up the text of the link that brought the person here with there. So that eight second impression is all about confirming their expectation. They were looking for something or waiting for something when then they saw your ad and thought it was worth clicking. So make it very clear that you're not putting any kind of any kind of bait and switch action on them that you are going to straightforward deliver what they want. I copied this one from from New Frontier and Let's Talk is is pretty weak for a number of reasons. Uh, there's lots of statistics out there that the point at which people want to engage with with a salesperson or an account rep is moving further and further down the funnel. So let's talk is the ex exact um, opposite of what they do. And you're not going to get a conversion straight away from that. Then once you've caught their impression, um, you need a hook, you need an extra prompt to, to pull them through, especially for people who are visiting your website the first time don't know that you've got a reputation as a provider of good content. You need to give them a bit more detail about why this guide, this resource, this event is worth their email address. So for ours, we put in some key term things like uh, like blacklists and IP addresses that, that marketers will all know, but might need um, a bit more of a prompt in how to understand and how to think about it in a bit more detail. So we can see here that they are that we're taking you through on a very technical level all these things that you really need to know. It's in reinforcing that we're going to offer them some genuine value. It's not just going to be a salesy pitch for our for our deliverability tools. Uh, compare the Keyshot version, they, their first line widely recognised as the best rendering software. Now, if this was attributed to to a publication like Tech Jury or to to a customer this would be fine on a landing page social proof is something that does does work but because it isn't uh, attributed or backed up with anything it ends up being quite weak if i was on their marketing team i would take this key features element they've put go down the bottom and i would put it right at the prominent because that's going to be the kind of thing that someone who's planning to download video software is going to be looking for those key features that that functionality And then you need a call to action. You need an extra prompt. You've shown the delivering value that you're delivering value, and they say, "Go on, give us your email address." We've kept ours super simple. Complete the form and download the guide. That's all we need them to do. Compare SAP, which has ten different calls to action. And if you zoom in and read the the text underneath each link, you'll see they're not even targeted at the same people. There is uh, things for thought. There's things about thought leadership for CEOs. There's things for marketing managers. Uh, and there's all sorts of contact forms. It's not clear what they want you to do, and you're not going to, be able to attribute much uh, very effectively to to this page. You want a single call to action with a single route out. This is they might as well have uh, your homepage. Sorry about that. And then you have uh, the form. Now, our advice here is keep it simple. You want to make it easy for that conversion to happen. You see marketing profs here, they might as well be asking for shoe size and marital status. They're trying to do too much profiling in one go. And if nothing else, um, that just takes a long time to fill in. And so use Google Chrome your email address field is probably not set up as an autofill. You could do this with two clicks, but their form you're going to have to type a lot more in. And off the back of this from marketing profs, I would almost certainly expect my phone to ring in the next 10 minutes with a sales pitch. And as we'll show you with um, with the nurturing follow up, you can gather all this data as you go through. And that's how you should be planning to do it. There's no need to be greedy right outside the gate. Get that email address, get them into your nurture programs, and then you can start adding value. Don't just chase them away. Um, by making them do too much work for a resource. Again, especially if they're a first time visitor that they don't know yet whether your resource is going to be worth all that information to them. You have to make the transaction worth it for both parties.
Now, we've done done our own A-B testing on this to, to back up what we're saying. And you can see by reducing the number of fields on the form from six down to one, we got an eight percentage point increase in the number of people filling the form out. And given the number of website visitors that fill out the form is, is very, very low anyway, that is a significant difference. So I would encourage you to test these things out, see them for yourselves. But keeping it short and simple is absolutely the order of the day. And um, this is a new thing that we found fairly recently. That they they scare people off. The, reason, the two reasons um, people don't fill out forms are being too time consuming and also security concerns. And we found out that captures sort of trigger a flight or flight response based around that uh, concern about security. Uh, so they're not necessary, especially for B2B, that you don't need them, absolutely leave them out. The same applies to, to recaptures. This box, it's a bit reminiscent of an opt-in box. So as well as the, the security concerns that a standard capture pulls forward, people aren't trying to opt into anything. They want to get their one resource or their one download, their one event, and get on with their day essentially so captures recaptures absolutely leave them out have a single form and keep it dead simple if you want to to dig into to more of this i mean landing page we could fill um, an entire webinar i could talk for most of the day about the, the best practices we've done and what we did was uh katie hart we did a seminar of uh, a webinar sorry with her just a few weeks ago, if you're if you guys are customers, then we've she's also been at our conference uh, multiple years in a row. So if you uh, search out the experiment on our website, this this was a comprehensive and as far as we know, unique bit of research we did, sticking um, ECG machines on on the heads of our, some of our employees and some of our customers, measuring how their brains reacted to a series of landing page layouts. So if you're looking to target female sales directors, we've got a whole uh, host of stats and facts on there, or male interns or whoever, whatever subset of uh, seniority, uh, age and gender you're looking to reach with your audiences. We've broken that down in the experiment. So jump on the website, download that and give it a read. We've also got a podcast coming out where Katie's going to talk about that in a lot of detail. So keep your eyes out for that. I think it's a really good read and it was a fascinating um, bit of science to be involved in. Now, the next bit we need to talk about is pop-ups because unfortunately some people um, don't come to your website through, um, through paid campaigns or search. But they, uh, if they come from come to your traffic, come to your site organically, you can't control where they land. So then what you have is pop-ups, signposts to your website that can direct them uh, where you want them to go. So I'm going to hand you over to our pop-up queen, Susanna, to talk about how to make them effect as effective as they possibly can be. Susanna, it is all over, you, over to you. Thanks, Richard. Hopefully you can all see my screen. Uh, let me know if you can't. Um, hi everyone, I'm Susanna and um, as Richard said, I'm going to talk to you today about one of my favourite website nurturing tools, Pop-Ups. Um, look, I can guess what you're thinking. Uh, they're possibly one of the world's most annoying inventions, right, Pop-Ups? Um, you may think of them as irritating windows you can't get rid of and that constantly interrupt your internet surf. And I used to think the same thing. But pop-ups have changed, and it's now common to use them for newsletter sign-ups, to upsell offers, and particularly in a B2B environment as part of a lead nurturing campaign. They've also been shown to double some marketers' conversion rates for lead generation. But pop-ups can be really obnoxious if you don't do them right. So let me explain how they can really help you to nurture your website leads down the funnel and ultimately enable targets to take the action you want them to take. 
So what is a pop-up? Back to basics. Essentially, they are windows, messages, or forms that appear over the top of the page content on your website. They sometimes have a bad rep, but in my view, they don't deserve it. Recently, pop-up tools have evolved and enabling precision targeting and messaging that creates context and value. So when used in the right way, they're a great way of getting your message in front of your audience at exactly the right time. Pop-ups fit nicely into a web nurturing campaign and they give you another bite at the cherry. So if your leads so far have slipped through the net, they've not read your email, they've clicked away from your blog before taking any action, or they're turning away from your smart form, a pop-up can be a great way of ensuring your message is received loud and clear. Web pages will convert naturally, but having a pop-up will turbocharge your conversions. So here's some quick stats. Of the people who initially leave your website without engaging, 75% intend to return later to become a client. Pop-ups can lead to a 60% reduction in your bounce rate and 50% more time on the site. And while the average conversion rate for pop-ups is 3%, the top performing pop-ups have almost 10% conversion rates. Well-designed and properly timed pop-ups can lead to conversion rates as high as 60%. So they really are worth considering to be part of your mix. So why do we love pop-ups so much at Spotler? It's not just because we've got an easy peasy pop-up tool. That's a shameless plug there. <laughs> um, but we love them because they're almost impossible to ignore. If you're not interested, you have to close them. So by that point, you've already read the message. And it's a great way to ensure from a marketer's point of view that you've been heard. And they're good for converting leads and getting your leads to take action. And they give you a chance to target your audience with a more personalized message. They're easy to set up and automate, so you can change them on the go and use a pop-up creator tool like Data Pop-Up, so you don't have to keep bothering your web team. And you can test and change them as often as you like. They allow you to focus on just one message. Your website's full of marketing messages, but if you want to say one thing really clearly, a pop-up is a great way to do it. And you can use much, a much softer sell, so a different angle to engage your web visitor. So you can offer them a guide or sign up to a webinar. You can engage your audience in different ways and leave lasting brand values, which lead to a sale. Oh, and by the way, the, the ROI pop-ups can be really huge. Um, the cost of conversion can be almost nothing. So as budgets tighten, um, you know, pop-ups really do provide a, a high value tool. So I'm going to explore the different types. First off, we've got your entry pop. They appear when a visitor lands on your website. The most, they are the most controversial form of pop-up and they can be risky to use in some situations, given that these precious leads have just landed on your site but they're also a great way to give discounts or inform visitors about promotion before browsing the rest of your site. The ones that we prefer to use at Spotler are an exit pop-up. So these appear when visitors are about to exit a page or create a new tab. They're a great way to capture leads with an enticing last ditch offer. Their purpose is to give your visitor reasons to stay a bit longer and hopefully take the action you want them to. We've also got timed pop-ups. So these appear on your page after a visitor has reached a certain time threshold, and it's up to you to decide exactly what that amount of time should be. They can work wonders for your email list as they appear on a landing page or a website after a visitor has remained there for a certain amount of time. But be careful because with these pop-ups, the timing can be crucial. You don't want to turn visitors away by showing them something too soon but too late and they may have already advanced. So we say about five to 10 seconds is the optimum time for a pop-up to appear, but check your site analytics because each bounce rate is different. And here's one we made earlier. Some of you, um, some of you may have seen this for this particular webinar. And um, we have this on our website for the past two weeks. And some of you may have also booked through this pop-up. I think this one popped up five seconds after 
you landed on the site. So scroll pop-ups, um, they're a great way to generate leads for your business blog or your website, and they appear on the page once the visitor has scrolled past a certain point. And this makes them effective for lead gen as, they've, as your leads have already viewed partway down the page. They've got more information about your company and they've shown more interest getting to that point. So you could set them at say 50 or 80% of the page so you can be sure you, that they've read the information they came for first. So it's a good way of checking in with the reader halfway through to entice them to read something else that's related or take action and pass on their details. So you can choose the best position on your web page with your pop-up tool. Um, you can choose left, right, top, bottom of the page, and you can choose between bars, buttons, a regular pop-up or, or a panel. Um, you want to find the balance between ensuring they are seen but not completely masking what's underneath. So exit intent pop-ups could be positioned more centrally as you really want them to be seen before your visitor gets off the page. But your pop-up software should include useful tools to make creating a pop-up easier and more effective. Um, tools for targeting by browser, region or traffic source or customise your pop-up with different colours, fonts and animations. And to get the most out of using these tools, take a test and learn approach. You can split test, you can analyse the performance of your pop-ups to continually improve results. And if you want your pop-ups to be seen wherever your website visitors are, just ensure that they are responsive on mobiles and tablets. So targeting options. Pop-ups are extremely useful in targeting each website visitor, especially if the tool you're using integrates with your marketing automation platform. You can control which pop-ups are shown based on parameters such as the pages they viewed, how long they've been on your site, or what stage of the buyer journey that they're in. As part of your inbound strategy, you can tailor a series of pop-ups to make them more personal to each visitor. This could be based on the type of device, their location, which campaigns they've clicked on, which site they were on before, or which ad they clicked on, and if they have been on your site before. Like with all marketing comms, this is the difference between spamming your audience with generic pop-ups and giving them tailored information to suit their needs that is helpful and valuable. So how do we create those killer pop-ups but ones that don't kill off your audience. So we say, make the call to action really clear. A clear call to action leads to more click-throughs, and you'll often see pop-ups with large yellow, red, and blue buttons. Um, it immediately catches the reader's attention and ensures they know how to complete your request. So don't, we say, don't make customers feel bad or use a negative statement with passive aggressive language that you may have seen on other pop-ups. For example, an exit button that reads, no thanks, I don't want to save money today. Um, if you want to give them an easy out, make it more positive, something like, I'll pass for now. And this leaves them feeling good about engaging in the future. Don't trigger the pop-up right away. Give readers a chance to read the content they came for and make them easy to close. Make sure there's a clear exit, like a cross in the corner so the reader doesn't feel locked in. If you make, up, make pop ups hard to close, that will only frustrate your audience who may also then think badly of your brand. Create valuable content that will be relevant, interesting, and that prospects will want to read. By donating a valuable resource, such as a white paper or a template, you will attract the right kind of leads. Offering an incentive in the form of a personal discount or a free gift can often help your click through rate as well. And if, but if you get one thing right, it has to be the context. The pop-up needs to relate to the audience that's interested. It needs to make sense and appeal to them personally, rather than being generic message. And if they are reading about a certain topic, a pop-up may put to a download a guide about it, or it may highlight a best-selling product that helps to combat that specific challenge. So lastly, keep the style simple true to brand and action oriented. An image of your product, or for example, an ebook cover, 
any kind of image that relates to the pop-up will make your offer much more compelling. I think that's it from me. So I'm going to hand over to Chris now for what comes next after the pop-up. Thank you, Susanna. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Jess. I am the marketing manager here at Spotly UK. And I'm going to follow on with what the guys have already talked about with what comes next. So after you set up your landing pages, your forms, your pop-ups, etc., then what can we do? So your website is your shop window and it, it really holds a fountain of leads that you might not even know exist. It's particularly important during this current climate. These leads are coming to you, they're showing you interest, they're indulging in your content and you may never see them again. That's why I just want to talk to you about a few simple things that you can implement to start getting the most out of your website and its visitors and how you can begin to improve your return on investment as a marketing team. So first up, IP lookup. Tracking the companies and individuals on your website and their behavior and interactions. Nurturing your website visitors through automated workflows, sending them content based on those behaviour and interactions. And plan B, if all else fails, let's go fishing. Think of it a bit like a clickbait, but in a personalised, more orderly fashion. We can still use a phishing campaign as targeted based on the info we already hold. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about our phishing campaign and a few other campaigns that we've got set up running in order to follow up your website visitors that you can implement as well. So first off, IP lookup, identifying the visitors on your website, the individuals as well as the companies, because 90% of your website traffic is unidentifiable. That's traffic that you have paid a hell of a lot of money for um, or put a lot of effort into to get to your site and you can't identify them to follow them up, meaning that they never make it into your pipeline and it's a bit of waste of wasted money and wasted effort. IP Lookup allows you to not only identify but also track which pages your visitors are looking at so you can put a score behind them. You can nurture them with follow-up campaigns, send them relevant content, send them over to sales, get in touch with them, just understand their buying behaviour and a bit more about their company details and company makeup a bit more. With our IP lookup tool, you can identify the contacts that work at the businesses that are on your website, as well as their email addresses. The campaigns and marketing sources that they've clicked through, which as a marketing team to prove your return on investment and your budget. Any contacts you already have cookied on your site and the company details such as address, phone number, revenue, number of employees, etc. So you can start to put together a real my um connection just my audio connection just dropped out sorry about that so i just wanted to go through slides here that we have from our ip lookup tool here at spotla um so as i said you can identify the companies that are visiting your website you can look at all the pages that they viewed who it was at the at the business that's viewed them the top 10 pages overall a score behind them as well so you can start to rank your leads based on engagement you can drill down into the campaign and keywords so what marketing campaigns they've engaged with um, in order to land on your website so pop organic traffic and you can see that throughout the whole of time so you can really get an idea of where they've come from and, and their, their whole journey of what they've engaged with. All of the contacts that you have already cookied at that, at that business, as well as obviously their email addresses, so who's already engaged with you. And then finally, you can see a breakdown of the people that work there, that work at the businesses, 
by management level or job function. And you can also purchase their email addresses here to automatically nurture them, automatically send them into your um, nurture workflows. So it's a really useful tool. So onto the nurture side of things, nobody buys on the first click. So it's important to understand where your leads are in the funnel. You can do this by scoring your web pages so that you can identify your visitors' buying intent. You're not going to contact everyone that lands on your blog page or your home page, so these would naturally have a lower score. But for instance, somebody who is on your services or your product or demo pages should be, a, should be higher up in the funnel with a higher score. And that way you can start to segment your leads, send the hot ones over to sales, nurture the colder leads to warm them up ready for sales. And it's all about educating your leads with your content before sales get to them. So all your web pages should be ranked. So here's our system. So our blogs, really light digestible pieces of content sit at the top of the funnel. Um, and we put a score of five points behind them. So they're, they're um, just trying to pique the interest of the reader. They're, as I say, they're not ready for a sales call. They're just reading your blogs, indulging in your content. A little bit further on down the funnel, we have our resources. So white papers, guides, ebooks. They're a little bit heavier to digest, a bit more, bit more weight behind them, a bit meatier. So we put a 10 point score behind those ones. Further down the funnel, you have your product pages, your case studies, your testimonials, anything like that, any, any customer um, evidence, customer based evidence that you have. Again, a higher score of 15 points. And then your sales pages. So whether that's book a demo, free trial, appointment, whatever it might be, um, gets the highest score of 25 points. So you can really see the funnel aspect here of what you're trying to achieve and you can really start pushing your leads further down the funnel using your content um, in order to increase their score and to educate them in order for sales to get in touch. Once you have your pages scored, you can start to nurture your contacts based on their website score. So to warm up the cold leads, feed them with more content based on their interest and educate them ready for sales. So a series of emails with different resources around the topic they were interested in. For instance, we sort all of our resources on our website into three different categories. So we have marketing automation, email marketing and lead generation. And that feeds into this workflow here. If you're already using data workflow, this will look very familiar to you. This is what our as looks like. You've, if you're not a customer of ours, you've probably been through this or might even still be in it at some point. So we have four different tiers to the workflow um, and to the nurture. We, we separate it out. So you have your intrigue tier. This is the who, who are spotler. And um, they're, you know, you're intriguing their interest, you're intriguing their leads. Further down, we have the discover tier. I want to learn more about what they do. Your leads are discovering who you are, who your competitors are, what you what you do differently. The consider stage, so 16 to 25 points, um, so your resources and your white papers. Should I buy from them? This is the consideration stage. So they're looking at, the, at your USPs between you and your competitors. They're really considering which supplier to go with. And the final stage of the funnel, the decision stage or the decide stage, 26 plus points. And these guys are, are pretty much ready for a sales call once they hit that score. They're, they're pretty much sales ready. They've shown enough buying intent to speak to one of your sales team. Our content also mirrors these tiers throughout the funnel, so it's an important way to identify that you have enough content for each stage of the funnel. Now on to nurturing based on website actions or activities. So. Following on from your, um, it, it's important to follow up on your website visitors. You can identify who they are, 
where they've come from and what they're interested in so we can use that data to our advantage create follow-up campaigns and workflows to feed your leads through based on what content they've engaged with on your site or what pages they're looking at so for instance will the asset download series i was just showing you that we have set up if you download a, a website about data purchase they're going to send you more content based on data purchase and gdpr and things like that we obviously know that's something you're interested in and the idea behind it is to have heavier pieces of content each time so that you're really increasing the score of your leads you're warming them up with the intent to pass them over to sales but you're also educating your leads on the, in the, the topic that they are interested in and you can have these series set up for all types of different website actions so um, asset downloads for instance event attendees um, because you've because you've downloaded this white paper we're going to send you this content or because you've been on these services pages we're going to send you more content on that because we know that's obviously of interest to you and your business um, and your role within your business so we're hoping to engage with you that way So just on to marketing channels, just to touch base here, we've obviously got a number of different marketing channels that are, dispos are disposable. Um, so, you know, whether you're using all of them or some of them, or you put all that time into creating the perfect form, landing page, pop-ups, you've scored all of your web pages, etc. Everything that we've covered so far, you've done beautifully, you've set up your follow-up campaigns. I'd imagine you want to know which channel is producing the leads now. Are they coming from email campaign, a blog, any paid ad running, uh, your social media? How can you tell? So we can measure all of these things using what, what's called UTM values. And UTM stands for Urchin Tracking Modules, and it was created by Google Analytics as a way to track which of your campaigns are proving a success and which are not. The Spotlight platform helps you to track your UTM values on your website and from your forms and landing pages so that you can start to identify which of these channels and which pieces of content are really working, really bringing in the leads and the good quality leads as well. So every inbound web link that you have, um, all your PR and all your paid ads and every, every channel that you're using, you're utilising, should have a UTM on it so that you can track the following. Firstly, your source, so where the URL was found. Then your medium, so which digital, which digital channel. Followed by your campaign name, the term or the keyword you've used to draw in the crowd. And then lastly, your campaign content. So you can use that to differentiate your ads if you've got multiple ones running. So that might all seem like a bit much, quite a lot of work to do. We have our very own URL builder on our website, which walks you through how to set up your UTMs for each link that you want to track. So it's important to, to include these UTM links on all your marketing campaigns, particularly the ones you're paying for, so that you can really start to see the return on investment and you can understand which companies and how many companies you can put the results behind it. You can start to identify the traffic and the individuals that are engaging with each campaign and you can then, for budget placement, becomes a little bit more effective. So on to our plan B, let's go fishing. If all your landing pages and forms and pop-ups and all the rest of it doesn't work, we have what we call the phishing campaign. So we call it that because it's essentially flinging some bait and seeing who bites. So the idea behind it is to get people onto your website. You still need to target these campaigns where you can, where possible so that it's not so that it doesn't become a mass marketing campaign it still needs to provide useful content for their job role or their industry or their business but it could be a piece of content that you know will get 
their attention or or a reaction from them. It could even be an external piece of content that isn't necessarily yours, but you're still trying to engage with them and, and pique their interest. It's a way to get people back onto your site in order for you to then track them, nurture them, cookie them, place them into the relevant campaign so that they're in your funnel and you're nurturing them, warming them up, ready for sales. That's the aim of the game. So we target by job level. As it's a phishing campaign, you can't really do much more than that at this stage as you don't have enough data on them, but it is as targeted as it can be. So through the IP tracking tool I took you through, Gator Leads, you can buy contact details from businesses on your website and send them some good content that you know will pique their interest. With our phishing campaign, we break it down into three um, three job roles because these are our personas, these are the guys that we're targeting, sales, marketing and C-level. And each pot will receive a relevant message based on their responsibilities within their business or um, you know what they what we know them to be interested in um, based on their job role. So a bit of a last chance saloon, what happens next after marketing have worked their magic? It's time to hand them over to say, the sales team. If the phishing campaign still doesn't work, get them on the case. Get sales to call them directly to see if they can get a conversation with them that way. The sales and marketing teams should be working together to nurture the pipeline. So it's not just marketing's responsibility. Sales play a part in it as well. Make sure you're using your sales team to its full capacity. Once marketing has had its touch points, get sales to get in touch with them, whether that's by phone or perhaps on LinkedIn or Twitter or just a simple direct email. It's important to try each way to get a foot in the door. If you know you can really work with these businesses, they fit your personas, they fit your killer values that you're that with the businesses you know you can do business with, then it's important to try and contact them if possible. So just to finish off then, a few final things that you can do um, with our software and with, with the IP tracking and the nurturing. Start profiling from the first visit so you can start to understand more about each company that's on your website immediately. Understand their demographics, so you, can, you can see a re really clear picture of who your target audience is. Never miss a lead again, so you can automatically send specific leads over to sales, maybe um, from a certain industry or they hit a certain criteria value, particularly a web score, maybe a particular marketing campaign, so you can start to segment your leads based on these types of things and send them over to the relevant sales rep. Add hot leads straight into your CRM so everything can write back into your CRM system so that your sales team have a complete visibility of all marketing touch points and the complete journey of where the leads, where their leads have come from. They, they've got a complete understanding of the journey their leads have been on. Provide all the information so you're ensuring your sales teams know enough about each lead so they can really tailor their pitch based on their leads' interests. They're not going in cold, they're not cold calling, they're not going in blind with their leads. They've got a whole arsenal of information um, based on their leads' behaviour and interactions. And they already have an understanding of who they are and what they want. The whole website journey, so from entry point all the way through down the funnel, they can you know, where they originally came from, which marketing campaigns they've interacted with, all the pages they've viewed and the content they've downloaded so they can start to see the whole journey and again, tailor their pitch based, based on that. Start tracking from the first clicks. You can track your individuals around your site so that you can push them through nurture series that are relevant to them and their interests. And finally, know your audience. You can start to see a clear picture of who is visiting your website, who the personas are you should be targeting, 
Um, this makes it really useful for the sales and marketing team to then agree on when a lead is a lead, because I know that's quite a, an age-old battle, agreeing on when a lead really is a lead. So with, with this sort of software and these types of tools in place, it's, um, it allows the two teams to come together and really agree on that. So that's all from me. I think have we had I think we've had some questions come in, Rich. I've seen a few. Yeah, okay. we have. Um, I'll start with the easiest question from Sophie. Um, what pop-up software or tool would you recommend? Um, I'm going to say Gator Pop-up. Um, so we're happy to get one of our uh, one of our specialists to um, to set up a one-on-one -on -one demo with you to talk about what Gator Pop-up looks like is that the best way forward probably i think would you like me to to pass your details on to to someone who can give you a full demo of the tool okay uh, leave that for um a second mandy's question can you direct us to where geolocation targeting um can be set um yes we can we uh, we won't dive into into the product demo uh, right now, Mandy, I, I, I had a quick look. I think Scott is your account manager. Is that right? Um, if it is, I will, I will ask him to to pick it up with you and show you, uh, show you, and show you a sort of one on one demo of uh, all the details of Gator Pop Up. I I didn't have a chance to see if you're using it already. If you're new to it, but um, but I'll leave that in Scott's hands um, to do do that are you are using it okay i will i will um i'll set that probably with scott maybe with charlotte or one of the other product specialists who can uh, who can take you through that in in full detail um elizabeth do you have any tips of how to increase lead generation when you don't have a lot of content um i mean let be obvious start with what you do have try it with a few different um approaches on as many different channels as you're using and with Sort of different focuses um what we do we've talked before about our um content treasure box where you take something like a white paper um and try and break down break it down into small elements make short blogs or messages and see what's um see what's having an impact with your audience there uh the other thing is start stalking your competitors follow them on linkedin twitter things like that see see what kind of content that they're getting traction from and then produce similar kinds of content because that's what's going to be resonating um, with your audience. Uh, next one, uh, Georgina, how are you getting around issues relating to home and therefore harder to track using IP lookup? Jess, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I think it's a very valid point, obviously, within this current climate as well. It is, it is trickier and it does make things a lot trickier. So we sort of have to rely on the contacts that we've already got cookied um, that are already in our database. We also are um, quite big on recommending purchase data. So if you've got any, any data that you've previously purchased or that you can purchase, um, you can start sending out a phishing campaign to that those data contacts and get them back on your website and then you can start cooking them and nurturing them that way um we're probably i think one of very few if not one of the only software provide email software providers that allows you to send to purchase data fabulous okay and We've got uh, John. When identifying businesses on our site, do we need them? Do we need to select individual emails to buy, or can this be automated? This sounds like a, a technical gator leads question to me. And I admit, I don't know the answer to that. You can automate it based on um, certain criteria. So if if you have leads come in through specific marketing campaigns or that meet specific criteria, such as location industry and um, whatever it might be job role for instance you can automate it so it purchases the email addresses and, and puts them into a specific workflow for you and that can be done through the software there's, there's also a useful blog on our site at the moment which um is is five ways to identify the individuals using gator leads so if you look on our blog i think it's probably on page two or three of our blog site um, on spotler.co.uk, then um, you can find that out. And that 
that basically gives you five ideas of how to identify those those individuals rather than the companies using data leads um, so that should help you as well cool. okay and one more i can see there from jim what's the minimum amount of traffic required for the lead nurturing approach to really start working well good question again um obviously industry standard click-through rate is sub one percent so if you're only emailing to say 10 10 people then it, you know you're not really going to get a great click-through rate but a click is a click right so it's still it's still worth doing and it's it's something that although it may take you a while to set up in the in the very first instance there might be a lot of work that goes into it in terms of content creating and planning out mapping out what you're going to send to who um it can be running for 12 24 months um i know we've we've had a few campaigns that we've set up that have been website based and like based on website interactions and and scores and um, we've left them running for 12 months and obviously at the beginning the volume's quite low but as you get further and further down the line um it gets it gets better okay jim your question and that's that's all i've got on so far if anyone else wants to ask another question i think we've just about filled up filled up a full hour of content there so i really hope that's been useful everyone listening thank you very much for your questions and for for paying attention and joining us oh one more from john can landing page creation be automated um, I, I don't don't think it can for for ppc um do you know what, John? I'm going to have to get back to you on that one because knee-jerk reaction is I don't think it can, but I don't want to say that. So um, I will talk to me and get back to you if that's okay. Brilliant. Perfect. I think that's everything then. So yeah, as Richard was saying, thank you guys for joining. Um, I hope useful tips away with you. We'll we'll send out the slides and the recording. Um, hopefully later this afternoon, if not by tomorrow, you'll have them in your inbox. And we hope to speak to you very soon. Take care.